guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is the day that I talk about my labor and delivery. Um, my last pregnancy update was 28 weeks, which means that you guys know that she was a girl. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, my whole pregnancy after 28 weeks until the, the day that I delivered was exactly the same. So there, you didn't miss anything but me getting gigantic. However, I do have all the pictures of my belly progression so I will insert that at the end of the video um, so you don't have to miss any of that see me get huge but I'm going to talk a little bit more about the statistics of me before I gave birth because I did go into labor on my due date my due date was August 20th and uh, yeah so by August 20th 40 weeks exactly um, I weighed 159.4 pounds so I'm, I'm sticking to my 159. I'm not going to round up to 160 because it's 0.4 and you round down. So 159. And I'm a I'm barely five foot four. I'm like five foot three and three fourths or something like that. So I'm a short person and I gained about 25 pounds within the first three and a half to four months of my pregnancy. So I have no idea. I have always been a very fit person. I have been in sports and been very athletic my entire life, my entire life. So I've never gained any more than 136 pounds. Um, I've never been any ha any heavier than that, I guess you could say. But um, I got gigantical real fast, and I don't know why. I was gagging and not eating for months. So I did that whole thing for a very long time. You guys saw that in my other updates. So if you want to see basically all the transformational type of stuff for this pregnancy, then you can watch my other uh, pregnancy vlogs. But um, yeah, I just got really big really fast. And by the end of it, I weighed 159 pounds. So I have felt nothing up to this point. I've gotten a few Braxton contractions starting at around 32, 33 weeks. Um, but maybe 10, 12 altogether from that point to the day that I gave birth. And at four, at that day, I'll give you a rundown of the day. How about that? Because it was ridiculous. My, my niece, Harlow, um, who was beautiful and precious, had her birthday on the 17th of August, right? And we were traveling and all that stuff, so she was pretty tired. So we, we basically, she had like a whole birthday month because she's all over the map uh, during her birthday month. So, and knowing that I was going to give birth in that month, you know, we would try to make stuff a little bit more special for her so she wouldn't feel left out because she's only turning four. Um, and so I booked a Disney breakfast, you know, with the characters uh, at the resort that we have close to our house. And uh, we did that in the morning, We, which is far. So we drove far, like 45 minutes to do that. Um, on the day of my due date. I don't know why, I just thought I wasn't going to go into labor because I felt nothing. So... So if you feel nothing, it means nothing. Then we went and got our toenails done. All of us, like a girl's day, we had a girl's day. My dad and my husband uh, were not there. And we did all this stuff. We all take showers, we're all ready. The hospital bag is ready. So if you guys wanna see what's in my hospital bag, then just let me know. Um, my hospital provides so much that I really didn't use anything. So if you wanna know what I did take, um, even though I didn't really use it, then just let me know and I'll show you. It's still in the bag. Um, so yeah, we did all this stuff. We were literally gone from the house for maybe seven, eight hours all day. We had dinner. We all, it was crazy. We all took showers. We had a full, long, regular day. Um, and then at 7.46, I had my first contraction. And it was so tiny. I could barely feel it, but it was different than any Braxton Hicks that I felt or, you know, not feeling anything at all. And I knew that it was a real contraction. I didn't feel it in my back or, you know, in my butt or anything like that. I just could tell that since it was different than everything else that I've had to, that I felt, that it was probably a contraction. But you can have real contractions without going into labor. You know, it doesn't mean, one thing doesn't mean the other. So. I tracked it. I got this contraction app a few days before and I tracked it and then maybe like six minutes later I had another one 
And then I had another one and another one. And I was just thinking, I think that I'm in legit labor. And this is only maybe been 10 or 15 minutes now I'm like oh man these are like less than six minutes apart you know and they tell you to come when they're two to three minutes apart then you for sure need to come absolutely so I started tracking them I told my sister my sister-in-law my mom and my dad that I thought I was having real contractions you know and then they have already had children my both my sisters have had kids and obviously my friends are my kids, so uh, we decided that we were going to wait until they were consistent for like 20 minutes or so and then call my husband to come home. So during this whole thing, my husband was in his um, chief initiation, so that was really exciting for our family that he um, made chief. So he's, you know, off in chief world. Uh, so I did end up having to call his sponsor. So this is all military side. So I did end up calling his sponsor because he wasn't able to answer his phone during initiation. So I called his sponsor, his sponsor called him. He called me and he was like, are you in labor? Are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, it's really happening. And then he comes home. He's all the way like 30 minutes away, 25, 30. So by the time he comes home, it's been a full hour from my first contraction to when he gets through the door. And by the time he gets through the door, everybody's already in the car waiting for him to come. The bags are all packed. Uh, my dog's in his kennel, you know, the whole story. And uh, we and I'm like, yeah, I think some of my fluid came out. I think I'm, I think my freaking water broke, you know. So I go pee in the bathroom just moments before my husband comes home, and. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm like, I think water came out, you know, and it freaking did, man. And I go, what? And I tell my sister, uh, both my sisters, I was like, oh my God, come upstairs, look at this. I'm in the bathroom, like with my panties down and everything. And I show them what I think is my mucus plug. And <laughs> My sister, you know, my, my blood sister, she was just like, you know, like, she didn't think it was gross. And then my sister-in-law was like, oh, that's really nice, beauty. You know, like, she thought it was kind of yucky, which it's, you know, it's extremely disgusting. But, you know, I'm going to show them anyway. I don't care. And I showed my mom, but I stopped at all the girls at the house. So my mucus plug, my water, and it didn't come out in, like, a burst or anything. It was more like a, like a leak. Um, but it was enough where my whole, my underwear was completely wet and I had to change my underwear. Um, so my husband comes like five seconds after that whole little show. Um, he comes upstairs and I'm like, you need to change into your outfit like ASAP and we need to peace out. You know, everybody's in the car waiting for us. And he changes his outfit and he's like, his eyes are like this. <laughs> It's the best. I can't. <laughs> I'm just in a great mood. And <laughs> we go into the car. We go to the hospital. Our hospital is only like three minutes away. So it's not like, you know, it's not a scary story or anything like that. But in the car, I'm feeling it. It doesn't hurt. It's not in my back and it's not in my butt yet. Um, nothing like that. I can just feel it in my lower stomach. And, um, we get to the hospital, we park in the stork parking, we go over there, and as soon as I open my wallet to give the front desk um, nurse, she's, she's a triage nurse, she's not just a front desk nurse, but she's a triage nurse, my ID, because this is a military hospital, so you have to check in military and then check in all of your other stuff, as soon as I go into my wallet to give her my ID, it gets real and I it starts to freaking hurt like that and she said are you sure because you don't really seem like you know you're in that much pain and I was just like I'm pretty sure that fluid came out and if not then I would rather if I'm not in labor I would rather just get the fluid checked and make sure that it's not amniotic fluid because um, I'm already so low at that point um, and that's dangerous it can get dangerous if your fluid is low and you start leaking and you don't tell them in time so she's like oh okay so now she's willing to like deal with me because I said that my I think my fluid is leaking 
if I'm not in real labor yet. And as soon as that's all going down, it just goes from nothing to like a thousand. In that moment, I just start having contraction on top of it, on top of it, on top of it, and it starts hurting for real, dude. Like, oh, what? I was kind of shocked because I've been there for three births and, well, four almost. And I see the contractions and I see the pain in my sister's faces, but I just don't feel it because it's not, you know, it's not me yet. I mean, you can't really be empathetic when it's not you and you haven't had a kid yet. Um, I mean, I can, it's just not real. So when it started happening to me, I was just like, is this really happening to me? It's just mind boggling, you know? And we wait in the little triage waiting room so they can get the little bed ready to do this um, NST. So it's a non-stress test and a fluid check. And before we get to that point, it gets real, real. So then they're like, oh, we're going to skip that and we'll put you in a normal triage room to triage you before we pull you into labor and delivery. And because if you're not four centimeters dilated in my hospital, they send your butt home. So, yeah, that sucks. And, man, I was far beyond four centimeters dilated when they checked me, okay? My, I was like at an eight, nine when they checked me. They rushed me to my labor and delivery room. Camera stop for a second, but, and that was it. I was in there. I was like nine and a half centimeters dilated. She, I only got checked a couple of times because it just didn't, we didn't have time. Um, by this point, it is maybe 10 something 10 something I don't know uh, because you know you have to wait in the waiting room you have to do all this whole song and dance with the paperwork and all this stuff and we had to wait to move from the triage room up to labor and delivery and then we had to wait for a doctor and our nurse blah 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 there's, there's a lot of waiting but by like 10 something, um, they check me, I'm 10 centimeters dilated, and if you have not noticed, I have not said anything about medicine. Uh, they got an IV in really fast, um, which was good, and they gave me, um, oh man, I don't know what it's called, but it's sort of kind of like a, an IV version of laughing gas, where you just... You, it's not a pain medication, but it's a I don't care kind of medication. Um, I guess you could call it like an anti-anxiety or something like that that they give you. Um, so you just don't care about the pain that you actually are in. And it's not a pain reliever. But they gave me a dose of that, and it's supposed to last for at least 10 minutes just so that you can make it through maybe a really big contraction or something like that. But they tested it to see if it worked on me um, because the anesthesiologist for that shift was working with another family. So if I wanted epidural, it was not going to happen that night. As I walk in and get into my room, seven other women go in to give birth as well. And it was real for them too. So there was no way, there was no version of that night that was gonna happen for, like an epidural was gonna happen for me. So I accepted it pretty, pretty early on um, that it wasn't gonna happen for me. And I just got over it, like, whatever, it's too, it's too late anyway, I'm not going to get upset about it, I'm just going to make it happen. So, I get that little laughing thing, but it's not like, a, it's not laughing gas, but it's like a medicine where you no longer care, and you're kind of just like, meh, like you're drunk. And, uh, <laughs> she gave me that, and it worked instantly, it only lasts for a few minutes, but, um, it was awesome. And I was like, oh, I don't need an epidural. <laughs> I could totally do this, which is that. This is awesome. And then a few minutes later, it was time to push. And I pushed for probably at least 15 minutes. It had to be at least 15 minutes. I don't know, but I it has to be at least 15 minutes. I'm not sure. But I pushed like, you know, I busted a um, I busted the capillaries of my face, pushing like a beast uh, down my neck. And I even popped a blood vessel in my eye. My lips were chapped from going like this, you know, like, 
and uh, <laughs> it was just Nutter Butters. And you wanna know what time it is now? I go in at nine something, uh, like maybe like nine ten is when we got admitted into the hospital in the first place, like when we get to the front desk. I get into my room maybe 45 minutes after that. So that's like 10 o'clock. I have to wait for my, uh, to be dilated to 10, because I was around like an 8, 9. And then I start pushing. So I gave birth at exactly midnight on the 21st but it was technically the milliseconds were right at the 50 mark at the point 50 mark so I could have picked that she was born on the 20th or the 21st because I'm it was I right in the middle for the millisecond so I picked the 21st obviously so that she could have a um, midnight hour birth and um, in military, we do zero, 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 like four zeros with lines in between. So I thought that looked nicer than uh, 1159. So that's why I picked the 21st. And yeah, that was it. My whole entire labor from the first contraction until the second that she was born was four hours and 15 minutes. And it was just nuts. I mean, it was just a whirlwind. You couldn't really catch your breath, and then it was just over. My sisters have had hours and hours of labor, and then just a few minutes of pushing. Like, they had less time pushing, but many more hours um, in labor. And it, I'm so used to sitting in a hospital and waiting and waiting and just being like, Oh my God, when is the baby going to pop out? Like, ugh. And the anxiety that you have from that. Um, but this was just completely opposite and it was just over and that was it nobody could even put take their jacket off it was, I mean it was nuts uh, we looked like a, a basically like a freak show because there's so many of us my dad my mom my husband my sister my sister my niece all of us plus me seven people uh, in this tiny delivery room and it was awesome it was really fun um, as far as pain level it really did hurt the most, probably the most pain I've ever had in my life, easily. But what it feels like is like having an asthma attack. For any of you guys that have asthma, but when I had contractions where my body was pushing the baby out, because when you don't have an epidural and you don't have pain medicine, you, you your body pushes for you. And then you either hop on the bandwagon and start pushing with it, or it will push for you and the baby's going to come out with or without you. That's just like a weird thing that happens. And so my body was pushing for me and it was like, you know, and it feels like, like you're having an asthma attack. It literally does. And it's very like jarring to pull your breath back in, you know? So you kind of want to get it over with pretty fast because for me, that's what it feels like. Um, and I don't know if it's a, because I have had childhood asthma and that's what it feels like to me when I am short of breath, but it was, it was hardcore. But yeah, other than that, I had a really smooth birth, smooth delivery. The whole thing was great. My nurses were great. Um, I saw my doctor for 0.5 seconds, so I don't know how great he is or anything. Um, and my whole labor or my whole pregnancy, I decided to opt for having nurses do my appointments instead of OBs just because nurses really deliver babies from my experience so I really wanted to get to know the nursing staff so I had different nurses every time um, so I really loved all the nurses they were great um, I didn't actually know any of these particular nurses because they were at night shift but um, they were amazing and she was really great for me but yeah that was it we she was born um, six pounds and 11 ounces and um, she was 18 inches long so she's small in our family she's small but you know she's regular and right now she's probably around eight and a half nine pounds um, almost seven weeks out and um, she's great she's doing really well I am breastfeeding successfully so that's really fun um, it's breastfeeding itself is not fun but you know what I mean? It's working, so that's really nice that I don't have to be stressed out about her 
being able to breastfeed or not. Um, so far it is working for me. Um, I have had already two episodes of, um, what is it, engorged? You know, like your breast is engorged and you're kind of like, you want to die, you think you're dying. Yeah, that is freaking nuts. Never, I've never even really heard of women talking about it like that, how it felt for me. That was really bad. I felt like I had the flu. Um, comment down below if you felt like you had the flu if your breast got engorged from breastfeeding, like if you slept too long and you miss a feeding or something like that. But she is sleeping four to seven hours. So, yes, I have a sleeper. My husband is a sleeper. My niece is a sleeper. Uh, my sister-in-law, so I think it's from his side of the family because our side of the family, we, we operate on three hours of sleep and we are like good to go, you know, like heavy. Um, but yeah, I guess that's really it. Um, right now, I think I weigh 132, 133 pounds. So I lost pretty much 30 pounds from giving birth to now. But my pre-pregnancy weight was 118. So I basically gained, hold on a second. 130, 12 pounds? Yeah, I think I gained 12 pounds. Yeah, 12 pounds of regular weight during this pregnancy. So I would say about 30 of the pounds were the pregnancy stuff. Like, the I had a lot of fluid, all that kind of stuff. Um, I was very constipated for a very long time, for several months. So that was an issue in the beginning. Um, well, like three-fourths of my pregnancy was an issue. So I gained quite a bit of weight, like 42 pounds altogether in my pregnancy, my first pregnancy um, that I've ever had. So, yeah, I have like 12 pounds to lose until I'm at pre-pregnancy, but I think I'm going to shoot for um, 115, but like my fit 115, not my like um, eating healthy 115, like my... I can do like 100 push-ups, 115, which I've been at most of my life, so I'm pretty excited about that. I am going to do a really quick tummy shot, um, since it's sort of just like a big update uh, video right now for the labor and delivery, um, but yes, here is Le Belly. I know, right? What? And I pretty much look like this um, maybe three weeks ago. But I'll show you the, like the legit belly, the whole thing, so you can see it's darker, you know, from how the skin was stretched out before, and it comes back together, so it's a little bit darker, like that thing, and I have that uh, myelinia negra thing. This part on the bottom, my line that I have on the bottom, I've had my whole life, so that that's normal for me, but. This one on the top, this little tiny skinny little line right there, that, um, that's not. So that's what I look like from the sword. And yes, I am so thrilled by how my body looks right now. Like, so yeah, I'm so excited that I'm already pretty small. I mean, I gained 42 pounds, so I, I, I'm definitely surprised. Um... But yes, I will show you really quick, since I showed you my stomach, what I wear when I leave the house, like when I actually go out, go out. Because I've had a few events that I've had to show up to, like a week postpartum, okay? Seriously. Um, here, let me put this together. I have this, and it's like a postpartum girdle. It's not meant for fashion or anything or to be underwear it's a postpartum girdle for real for if you had a c-section after a baby or even after abdominal surgery so this is more like um, a medical girdle than anything else it has closures on the side in the front and it has obviously the closures so that you can pee and stuff while you wear it and man when I first um, gave birth, I couldn't fit this to save my life, like, no way, I couldn't even hardly put it over my legs, but now it fits pretty nice, um, still tight, which is, you know, the purpose of it, but, um, I'm really liking that, so I am utilizing that, um, and this, this other, this other one, 
I don't know where it is right now. I'll show you in another video, but it's another sort of wrap, but it goes from like, you know, it wraps like this, like a workout compression garment kind of situation. But yes, um, I think that is it for this big ass video. Hopefully I can edit it down. Um, I feel like this video is already like 20 minutes long. But we shall see. Some of my videos are really short, some are really long. But yeah, that is it for this video. If you are as excited as I am about my little baby, then hit this like button down there somewhere. And subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!